Hey everyone, my name is Senya and I'm a digital artist. And in this class, we will be creating artwork from a portrait of a line. So this is the image that we are going to use. And we are going to create this from the original image. So I'm going to show you all the steps that I did to create this image. All the images that I used in this are in the project files. You don't have to remove backgrounds. These are all PNG files. So it's really easy to follow along and recreate the same image. You can eventually create your own kind of image from this. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but I'm going to show you exactly how I created this. You can follow along and create the same image if you want, or you can use your own images. Maybe you want to create something a bit different or pretty different photos. The steps are the same and you can just try to follow along. And it's really easy. I show everything I do to create this. So I hope to see you in this class and it's going to be a lot of fun to create this thing. Let's just jump into Photoshop and start with creating a new file. Now for this, I want to use something really big, like 4,000 by 5,000 pixels, because when I use a big size like this, I can always use it for print or maybe rescale it to even bigger without losing the quality. So try to use something big as this. Maybe if you have an old computer, it's going to be a bit slow, so you can also use a bit smaller size. but always try to start with the biggest size possible that your computer can handle. So for me, this will be fine. If I didn't record this video, I would probably even make it bigger. So I'm going to use 4,000 by 5,000 pixels. The resolution doesn't matter because we work with pixels. If you work with inches, centimeters, millimeters, stuff like that, the resolution does matter. So this doesn't matter. So I'm going to leave it like this and 8 bit is fine. And let's create. Now, let me show you this first. I have downloaded a bunch of these images that I want to use for this. So before I started creating, I just went on the internet and find all these images and also a bunch of lions. So that's what I usually do. I first find all these images that I want to use and maybe download even more and some if these images I'm not going to use, I'm just going to try to see how that looks. Now I got all these lines here and the difficult part here is to find images that are good to you. So you can see here, these are pretty good images, but I'm not going to use them all. I just need to find one. So I made my selection. I have like this one, this one, or this one. I'm going to use this one because you can see here, the quality is really good. So this is fine for this one. Now let's just take this image and drag this in our file. Let me put this back here so we can see this better. All right. And now what I want to do is I'm just going to hold down Option or Alt on Windows and stretch it out like that so we fill the whole area. We can eventually even make it smaller so it looks better, but for now I'm going to do it like this. We can always resize it later. You can see here this icon means it's a smart object. So if you resize it and make it smaller or bigger, the quality doesn't get bad. If you don't have this, if it's rasterized and you're going to make it small like this and after that make it big, you will see that the quality is going to get really bad. So let me show you quickly how it looks. You can see here the quality drops. So make sure you always have smart objects. I'm going to press Ctrl Z to go back like this icon here. If you don't have that, press right mouse and convert this to a smart object. All right, let's first start off with adding all these images. So I have all these images here. And the first thing I want to do is to just fill this whole thing up with this image. So what I'm going to do is just drag this here, make it a bit bigger, and that's it. I'm not going to watch the image now for the quality or the colors or anything. I just want to fill this whole thing up with all these images. So just drag them in your file, resize it, rescale it, just to fill this whole area up. So let me do a bit of these, especially the parts that are like around it you need to fill don't put stuff around his face because we don't want to ruin the face now we just want to make sure we have a lot of stuff going on so people can look like long at your design so it looks really cool all right let me do like this also just drag me a file and place them around this line i'm not sure about this one i just downloaded this maybe this will also look cool let's try to do this also maybe to get some more colors in this the challenge here is to get nice and beautiful colors and it has to look real. So before we start doing all the colors, just 
make sure you have enough different images here. You can even use the same images if you want, just use them like from a different side, stuff like that. So you don't have to worry that you have the same stuff. Now let's see, let's also do this one. Let's put this here. I just want to make sure I have a lot of stuff going on, like different types of images. Let's see where I have here a leaf. You can see this leaf is like really green. So we're going to change it later on. And this one, so leaf maybe here. Let's see, let's, let's do some here. It doesn't really matter if it doesn't look real now. This is just the beginning of the design. So we need to make sure we have a lot of stuff going on and make them smaller. Don't do make them too big. It's better to make like images smaller and use more images. So you have a lot more details than if you use like one big image and stuff like that. All right, let's see what we have here. I think I have pretty much a lot of stuff. Now, let me put this back. I don't need this. Now, what I'm going to do now is if I'm going to control and click on one of these images, I can press control J or command J on Mac and just duplicate it and put them around it. Let's also duplicate this one like that. Maybe here. Let's do another one. Let's do one here. I like this flower. I'm going to make this small because I want to have more stuff going on. Press Ctrl J, duplicate it. Move it around. Let's see, maybe here. And maybe this silk thing here, I'm going to also put. Let's put this also on some other sides. I'm going to put this behind the flowers because it's like really blue and it's it's take too much too much space now so i'm gonna put this like in the background maybe one more here like that like there is some silk thing going around this line all right you can see this looks really cheap now so what we have to do now is to first make sure the colors are not that bright because when you have all these bright colors it just looks really fake now all right so to make the colors right, let's first select all these layers by holding down shift, select all these layers, but not the line, just all these stuff we added and click on this little icon here for the folder. So we have one, everything in one folder and this is our flowers. Now I'm going to create a hue and saturation layer on top of those. Make sure to press this so we only affect the layer underneath it. Make this gray, zoom in. And let's just drop the saturation here so we get rid of all these bright colors. So you can see this is really easy to do all at once. Now we can even move these sliders around to change the hue of these colors. Maybe you want a bit like this or you want it the other way around. So you can play with this if you want to create like really different colors from the original. But I'm going to slightly drop it to the left like that. All right, next thing to do is we need to make some shadows for all the stuff around it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the layer of this line, then create a new layer. And now I'm going to select the brush. And if you open up the brush settings here, you get the software and brush from the general brushes of Photoshop. And here you want to drop the opacity, let's say around 20%. Let's also drop the flow here. Just make sure you have the hardness also at zero and the size, well, it depends on your image. So you can make this smaller and start brushing shadows here. So we have this stuff going on here and you can see here, I just press my mouse a couple times to make these areas darker. When you have like these flowers, you can even make like little shadows of this flower here. So instead of making this all black here, try to make like a shadow behind it, like the same way it goes. So you can see the leaf goes like there. So it's better to make like a shadow like that. Now you need to have an idea of where the lighting will be. I now made a shadow on the left side, on the right side, sorry, of this, of this flower. So we need to make sure all the shadows are going to be on that side. So if you made a shadow on this side, don't start making shadows here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to also make a shadow here. Just press a couple times. Also make here. The reason why I made this opacity flow really low because when you have it too much, it's just going to get too too dark. 
the shadow. So it's better to press a couple times so you can really have control of the shadow instead of making like really dark shadow. And after that, it doesn't look real anymore. And you can see here, it looks really nice now just by clicking a couple times on the right side. Let's also do the same for this one here. Just a bit of a shadow. Let's just press a couple times. Now also here, let's make sure it's go on, on the left side and underneath it like there. Maybe a bit here. All these little details are so easy to create and at the end it will look a lot more realistic than if you don't do this. Also let's do here. A bit more here. This one. Can even make a bit darker here. Let's make this all a bit darker. Also here, behind this one. You can see this leaf gets really close to the to the lion. So you can make this one a little bit smaller. All right, if you make mistakes like I did now, just press Ctrl or Command Z and go back because we have shadows on the bottom side and I started to make them on the top side. So don't do that. Just like that. Not too much. Let's also do a bit here. Just so we have some nice shadows around this whole thing. All right, also here. If you want to do this faster, you can increase the opacity and flow a bit. So you can see the shadow better. But I just like to click a lot of times to really see how it looks when I click instead of clicking like one time and it gets really dark. So I like this way better. But it all depends on how you want to create your stuff. So also do here. So also do here. You can see I don't like the fact that this shadow is going to get too dark, so I'm going to drop it. So also do here and let's do a bit here so we really see some depth in this image like it goes in in between those flowers just like that and you can see this already looks a lot better if i disable this enable this you can see we created nice beautiful depth all right the next thing i would like to do here is to make some darker and lighter areas in all the stuff around it you can see here we don't have much contrast in it so i want to make a bit more contrast and just brush stuff around it so what i'm going to do now is create a new layer on top of these flowers folder that we created then go to edit fill and fill this with 50 percent gray so that way we have a separate layer that we can work on and use the dodge and burn tool now, if we change the blend mode to overlay, we won't see this gray layer anymore. And that way we can use the dodge and burn tool and have a separate layer for it. If we don't use a, use a separate layer, like 50% gray layer, we cannot do this on, we have to do this on every layer separate from this folder. So that's really a lot of work. So it's better to do just like this and just select the burn tool. Let's do the burn tool first and select highlights and bring this around. 30-40% and start brushing some shadows. You can even make this bigger, like let's say 50%. And just start brushing shadows here. You can see here we have darker areas. So what I would want to do is these darker areas, make them a bit darker and brush there. So we create a bit of a depth in this image. So you can see this dark area gets better now. You can do this here. Let's do this here. Just a bit of a brushing. It doesn't have to be much like that. Also this flower, so we get nice shadow. So especially the parts that are close to the border of this image, try to make them a bit darker. So we have like more focus on the center of this image instead of all the stuff around it. Let's do a bit here. You don't have to do this much, just a bit of a brushing. So the image doesn't look flat anymore. We get a bit more depth in this whole thing, especially these parts here. So imagine this is the shadow of this leaf. So you want to brush a bit of this darker here. Let's do a bit here like that. A bit of this flower. You can see here, I don't really watch what I'm doing. I just brush all this stuff like randomly. I'm just looking at the dark parts and brush them a bit darker. A bit here. Don't do it too much. If you do it too much, it's going to look weird. So I do this slightly like that. All right, so I did this whole part. You can see here the difference. It gets a bit darker and we get more focus on the center. Now, if we switch to mid-tones here, 
and drop the exposure, let's say around 20, 30%. Let's make the burst bigger and do a bit more, not much, just a bit like that. That's it. Now let's do shadows also and drop this under 10% and one more time. So now we have nice dark areas around it and we didn't affect the center and we get more focus on the center of this image. All right, the next thing is to do is to create another 50% gray layer on a new layer. Go to fill again, change the blend mode to overlay. And here I want to select the dodge tool. And with this dodge tool, I can make areas lighter. You can see here it gets really light, so I have to adjust these settings. Let's select highlights here and drop this to around 50%. Maybe even less because this is really light. And let's start brushing some areas light. So I want to make like highlights here. Maybe here. This is something you want to do a bit more precisely than the darker parts. Because when you do it like this, you can immediately see how it looks. So don't ruin the image. Try to pick these lighter areas and make them a bit lighter. Let's even drop this lower, let's say 20-30%. And just brush these areas lighter. Try to find stick stuff that is sticking out and that is light already, like this. You can see here, this is sticking out. This part here, do bit here, also bit here. This one is white already, so you don't really want to brush white stuff or really light stuff. Only this stuff like this. If you brush it too much, it's gonna, just going to get white and you won't see the details anymore. So you have to do this a bit more precisely. Let's see. We have a bit of white stuff there going on. So later on, I'm just gonna put something in front of it so you won't see it. So don't worry about all this stuff. Let's do a bit here. Let's do a bit here. This is white flower, so I don't wanna do it too much there. Like that. Bit here. You can see it doesn't have to be really precisely. You just have to do some brushing to create some beautiful depth in this image. Right now, maybe it looks a little bit weird. I'm going to drop this here because you can really see it good. Right now, it doesn't have to be like beautiful. Later on, when we do final adjustments, you will see all these highlights will pop up in the final design after, after doing the final adjustments to make this all better. All right, I think this, this looks fine for now. And now if I compare this, this was before and this after, you can see we get all these nice highlights now. All right. Next thing to do is to let's give it a bit more contrast. It looks like like without colors now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a curves layer. This is on top of all the layers and press this again, this little icon. So we only affect this folder of the flowers. And if we increase this, we get more highlights. If we bring this one to the right, the darker areas get darker. So I want to do the midtones first. Let's drop this a bit down. So make it a bit darker. Let's bring this to the left a bit. And if this is too light, you can see here it gets all too light. I usually just take like this part and just bring it a bit up like that. And that's a lot better. And you can see the difference. We give it a bit more contrast and it looks better. All right, next thing to do is to work on this line. Don't forget to save your work because when you get to a stage like this, it's going to be like really, really bad if you, if your Photoshop crashes or something. So save your work every couple minutes. Sometimes you can even save it as a different file name, like line art A, line art B, line art C, whatever. So you can always go back to a earlier version if you don't like the new versions. So let's work on this line. I want to brush this line a bit. So I'm going to also do a new layer. Let's make a new layer first and go to edit fill. And fill this with 50% gray again. Change the blend mode to overlay. And here I want to do is do some burn first. So this is actually the same as we did with the flowers around it. Let's select highlights first. Highlights. Bring this a bit up to around 40-50%. And let's brush darker parts darker. So you can see here this eye around it. If we brush this darker, it's going to look like, I don't know, I don't even know how you call this, but it looks like it has more depth or you see more details, whatever you want to call it. I think it looks a lot better when you start brushing some parts darker like this. 
And now it looks like he's more hiding in between those flowers, if that makes sense. So you can see here, this was really light and now it gets a bit darker and we get more focus on the center of this image. Let's do a bit here. We don't want to do it too much. Now let's switch to midtones again and bring this down. And if you can see here, if you do it too much like this, it's going to get red. Don't do that. So try to avoid that that red thing going on when you do it too much. So this is, that is like a sign that you did it too much. We have this thing sticking out here. So what I would do here is make a little shadow of it to make this look better. But I will do this later on. I'm going to brush this first like that. Let's see how that looked before and after. I think it looks better. Now let's do some shadows. And you can see here, I almost drop it to zero because this line is pretty dark already. So we don't have to do as much. All right. So this was before this after we make it a bit darker. Now let's make a new layer and fill this with 50% gray again, change the blend mode to overlay. And here I'm going to select the dodge tool. So with the dodge tool, I can make stuff lighter. I want to make, let's see, let's do around. 40% mid-tones. So we can make the mid-tones lighter. I want to make sure it looks like he's sticking in between these leaves. So I want to make these center parts a bit lighter. Also going to make the eyes lighter. We won't, don't want to lose the side of his eyes like that. And you can see how cool this looks when you make the eyes lighter. And this was before and this after you can see here now. It looks like he's sticking out of the ears kind of hiding spot of him. Let's do a bit here, maybe a bit here like that. Don't do it too much or else it's going to get ruined. So this is fine. All right, let's do some curves to this line. With the curves, we can change the lighting a bit. So I'm going to create a curves layer, press this. Let's put it underneath this and press this. So you want to affect this line. And here I'm going to make it dark first like that, not too dark, just a bit darker. And now I'm gonna take a normal brush, select, click on the mask, bring the opacity flow all the way up again and take a black brush. So you wanna select the black color because with black we will remove parts. And now I can make areas lighter that I want lighter, like that. It's just a bit darker, so we get a bit more like shadows. All right. Next thing to do is to work on more stuff around them. So this looks fine for now for me. Later on, it will look a lot better when we are done. Because the border here, I think this is too light. We still get too much distracted by this. So later on, we will change it. Now we can put stuff on its face or around its face to make this look really cool. So I have these parrots here I could use. Not sure how they're going to look, but I'm going to try. Maybe you want to put like some parrot sticking out here. Let's also do one here. I'm just going to put them all in this image and later on I will decide if I need them or not. Let's see. I also got these two. Maybe these two will work. Let's put them here. And let's see what we have here. I also had some butterflies here. Maybe we could put a butterfly on its face like that. And let's see what we have here. Another butterfly. Just to make this whole thing like full of stuff going on. I also have these butterflies. Not sure how this looks, but you can see here these butterflies are not photos. So I'm going to skip those. I don't want to mess with graphics and photos at once. I just want to use either photos, either graphics. Let's do this. I think this will look fine. And let's see, maybe another parrot. All right, I'm just gonna put all these parrots here and later on I can decide if I wanna use them or not. Let's put this one. Let's see, I don't wanna ruin his eyes. So sometimes it's really difficult to decide what to use and what not to use. You can really easily mess this whole thing up by putting too much stuff in it. So maybe one is enough. I don't need to. This one is here. I don't know about this one. It's kind of distracting me too much. So probably going to remove that one. 
let's get rid of that one. I'm not going to use that one. Let's do this one. And let's see, maybe I have I have a feather here that we can also use. Let's put this feather here to get some more stuff in front of it. All right, this is our, let's select all these layers here and put this in a folder and move it a bit around so we can fill this whole thing up. I think we can make this a bit more creative by putting stuff like in front of his eyes and face a bit instead of making like this flat image. So if you do stuff like this, it's going to look a bit more creative. So you got to try to make something that doesn't ruin the image, but still looks cool. So you have to like move things around and see how that looks, maybe on his nose here. But I don't want to ruin his face too much. So I'm trying to see what looks best here. And try to use realistic sizes. So a parrot like this one is really small, I think. So this line is a lot bigger than these parrots. So let's see how this looks if we make this smaller. Like that. Let's see this. This one, we can duplicate this one like we have all these feathers falling around him. Maybe here. Let's do it like that. All right, and now I think this ruins the image a bit. So maybe like this. All right, and now we have to blend these images better in this in this design. So what I'm going to do now is let's first again drop all these colors with the hue and situation, put it above the folder so we affect the whole folder when we press this, and just drop the the colors here, like that. And next thing I'm going to do is to give it a bit more contrast. So I'm going to create curves, bring this down, and bring this a bit up like that. Let's see. Just play with these curves a bit and see how that makes your image better. Maybe like this. And let's see, maybe this one is too big. All right, now we have to make some shadows because these, like this a butterfly here doesn't have a shadow. So let's make shadows now. Let's make a new layer underneath all these animals here. We just edit and let's just select the black brush again and bring the opacity and flow all the way down again. Like that. And just start brushing. Remember we made shadows on the left side of everything. So just brush a bit here. Like that. Also do this one here a bit. If you want to make it look like he's sitting on him, just make the shadow a bit smaller. Like it's really close to him. Like this. Just make the shadow black. I didn't make it black, so make sure it's black. Let's also do here from this parrot. So what I'm doing now is to brush just some parts darker. All right, we have this a butterfly here. I'm going to press Ctrl J to duplicate it. Press Ctrl U or Command U to bring up the hue and situation and just drop this one to minus 100 to make it black. Then go to Edit, Transform, Flip, Vertical. And now we have this shadow of it. And let's just rotate it a bit to there and drop the opacity so we can create like a shadow from this butterfly. But it doesn't look real now, so we have to add some blur to it. So go to Gaussian Blur and just add a bit of blur to it so we can make this look a bit more. I think this is fine. And now if you select both of these layers, you can move them around. Maybe this is better here or maybe on the snows, whatever you like. Now I'd like to adjust the color a bit of this butterfly, so I'm going to create curves on top of it. Select this to and affect this one, make it dark. And with a brush, with a black brush, I can make it lighter on some parts that I want lighter. So I'm going to press on this mask and just make it lighter like that. So you can see it looks a lot better. Just to make sure we have lighter and darker areas instead of all dark or all light, whatever. All right, let's also make a bit more shadow from this one. This one looks a bit grayish. So let's first 
give it some curves. Let's take the midpoint and bring it down to make them a bit darker. Let's also do the dark areas like that. Press Ctrl J and press Ctrl U to make it black. And then I'm just going to go to edit, transform, flip vertical and put it there. Let's make sure it's behind all this other stuff, like behind this parrot. So we have to move this all the way down like that. Just change the opacity here to really low and you get a shadow that looks a bit more real than just brushing. Maybe like this, it's fine. And don't forget to give it some blur to eventually make this look even better. You can barely see it, but whatever. It's like better than not to use shadows. All right, I think this looks fine. We can also do the same on all these animals here. So I'm just gonna do that quickly here. You can see the animals at the bottom are, don't look real. So what I'm going to do is make them a bit darker. Just make them a bit darker like that. I'm not sure about this one. It's annoying me a bit, so let's move this around. I think I'm going to duplicate this butterfly here. I like this butterfly, so I'm going to select all these layers, press Ctrl G, G, or Ctrl G to group them, then press Ctrl J duplicate it and we can now move this butterfly around and don't use like the same butterfly try to flip it horizontal and rescale it so it doesn't look like the same butterfly rotate it a bit so you don't have to like make this all from scratch again just duplicate a couple of these all right so let's see how it looks maybe somewhere here i think this looks fine all right let's start making some depth in this image because we don't really have depth in this image now. Now to make depth in this image, it's really easy by just blurring things out. So when you get, get close to the camera, you get stuff that's blurred out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see what I can use to blur out. Now I have all this stuff here. We could, for instance, just use a flower and blur that out. So let me try this one first. Just make sure you put it behind all the other layers. So let's make a new layer on top of everything and just drag something in your image. Let's put it back here and make this big. And you can see this is really big. And if you go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, it's gonna get blurred out and you create some depth in this image. So that's a really easy trick to manipulate depth. Now, you don't want to ruin the image, so just use it somewhere, like in the front, maybe here. Let's see. I'm just going to give it a bit here. Press Ctrl J to duplicate it and move it to other parts. Maybe here at the top. And we even got nice colors now from this flower. And we create some, some little depth here. Let's see, maybe here. All right, let's not do this too much. Let's use another image. So what I'm going to do now is actually the same thing, but with another image, so I have another color in this design. Let's do this flower. Make this really big. Not sure how this will look, but let's try. Filter, let me put this back here. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And now just blur this out. You can see my computer is gonna gonna go a bit slow now because I have so much layers now, so he has to think a lot. And let's see where we can put this. Let's do it here, somewhere at the top. Duplicate it, maybe at the bottom also some here. Don't do too much, it's just a little effect that you wanna add to this image. Like that. And let's duplicate it one more time. Maybe put it in front of these parrots here. So it looks like maybe there's another parrot in front of it. Ctrl J to duplicate it again. And if you put it like this, you can also just rasterize the layer. Press right mouse, rasterize it. And just brush some parts away so you don't ruin the image itself. Like that. And it looks like there's something in front of the camera there. 
All these little details will make the whole image at the end look better. All right, at this point, we have all the images as we want to, so we can do final adjustments to make this look better. So I wanna create a light source on top. So I'm gonna create a new layer, then select the color and pick something like yellowish orange, almost too white, something at this range here. Press OK, select the brush, take the general soft round brush, bring the hardness down and opacity flow at 100, and just make this a bit smaller and click here. So we make this dot, then press Ctrl Command T to bring up the free transform. Let's make this a bit bigger. Take one corner, hold down Ctrl or Command to make and stretch it out. So we make like this sort of light beam. And while holding down Ctrl, take these different corners to make like this light coming from there. So that's pretty easy to create a light source. And you can press Ctrl J to duplicate this, maybe make it a bit smaller, make another light beam somewhere there. All right, now we can do final adjustments. So what I'm going to do now is to press Command Alt Shift E or Control Alt Shift E on Windows. So we have duplicated version of everything. So at this point, we cannot change the, the position of stuff anymore. We are going to do final adjustments. Press right mouse on this layer and convert this to a smart object. Then go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. Your camera raw filter might look a little bit different if you have an older version of Photoshop. I have the latest version, so this is the latest update. They recently changed everything. But you have the same settings, it just looks a little bit different. Let's go to basic and start with making the lighting a bit better. So let's increase the exposure a bit. Let's give it a bit more contrast. The highlights we can drop a bit. And the shadows, let's make them a bit darker. Let's also drop the whites and let's increase the black so it doesn't get too dark. Now we can drop the texture a bit so it looks softer now, but we don't want to lose the details. So I'm going to increase the clarity and let's give it a bit more dehaze. Let's drop the vibrance a bit so it doesn't is so it isn't too colorful. So it looks a bit more real. Now let's go to curves. Let's leave curves. Let's not do that one. Now go to details and give it a bit more sharpening so we see all the details even better. Now next thing is color mix. So this is probably my favorite part of this because here I can change the colors of everything. So I wanna make sure I have colors that look natural. So what I'm going to do now is to make sure it, I don't ruin the fur color of this line, but only the stuff around it. So maybe like this. Let's see, if we move this from the left to the right, we can see exactly what changes. Let's move the greens to that side. Let's see the aquas, not much going on. The blues, this is from all these images. Like, let's make them a bit more green. And let's try purple. Let's move that to the left side. Magentas. Let's leave that one. And now go to saturation. Here we can set how much color we have. I don't wanna have it too light, so. I'm just gonna make sure the fur color is colorful and the other stuff is a bit less colorful. So we get more focus on the center of this image. Maybe only this, like that. Just move them from left to right and see how they change. And just slightly adjust them like that. Let's try purple here and magenta. I think this looks fine. And go to luminance. And here you can set how light this is. So maybe this one is a bit lighter. Let's see if we can change this one a bit. Let's make this a bit darker like that. The aquas, blues. Let's leave it like that. And this one like that. This is fine. Now, the last thing and then it is also really important in camera is calibration because here you can change the whole color tones of everything. So if you want to have it more like this, you can move this one to the left, for instance. But I want to still make sure it looks real, so I'm not going to do this too much. Just slightly to make this look better. So you have nice colors, but it still looks like a real image. Let's see if we can change this one a bit. Let's move this a bit to the left. And this one. Let's leave it like that. All right, that is fine. Click OK, and now it's going to process this. And you can see here the difference before it looked like this, and now it looks like this. I think looks a lot cooler now. 
All right, let's do some color balance also to this. So I'm gonna create a color balance layer on top of it and just slightly adjust these settings. So let's give it a bit more yellowish and a bit more blue like that. I think this is better. You can see the difference. It's a little bit different color. Now let's also do curves here. Let's bring up the highlights a bit and make it a bit darker, like not too dark, just a little bit like that. Now, the problem here is we have too much light on the edge of everything. So what I'm going to do now is to add a gradient. Let's see gradient here. Change this to radial, the style, put it in reverse, then click on this and select black or like really dark brown, something like this. Let's just do black. Click on this, click next to it to duplicate it, then drag it to there. Take this one and drag it down. So we remove it and put this on this side. And here I can set the scale. So this is really dark. You can see we can make something that will make the bottom darker, but the center needs to stay light. So I'm gonna do it like this. Let's see, maybe like that. Not too much, just a bit. Then we can drop the opacity a bit, so does it get too dark? You can see now it's a bit too dark, so to fix this, I'm going to create another curse on top of it and increase the highlights here. So we get nice contrast here, and we still see the line very well. Just play with these settings and try to make this look better. Now, if we change this to another color, we can adjust these colors a bit. So if you have a bit more blue, you can change this one, then go to green. Change it a bit. Usually I only take the left side, so I only take this one. And then blue. Let's leave blue, don't need blue. I think this looks fine. All right, and last thing I would like to do is to add a gradient map. I have these 105 aspiring B gradients. I usually use at the end. So if I want to have a more like blue tones, I can select this one and just change blend mode too soft light and drop this really low, have a bit more blue in this image. But it gets a bit too dark, so I'm gonna try another one. I'm just gonna scroll through these and see which one will make my image look better. So I think this one also looks nice. It's just black, get more contrast. Just go through these and try to pick one that makes your image look better. Maybe this one. I think this one looks cool, a bit more greenish. All right, I think this is a bit too dark. So what I'm going to do is add another curves. I like to add a lot of curves to this to make sure it has enough contrast and we can see the line very well, like that. Maybe a bit less. So this really depends on your screen. If you got a good screen, you can see this better. If you have a screen that's not so good, it's really difficult to see this. Now, last thing to do, I would like to make these eyes pop out more. So I'm gonna create a new layer and pick something orange, or you can even do blue, maybe blue is nice. Let's try blue, something blue. Let's make his eyes blue because we have all this blue stuff around it. And just make like this brush here. Don't do it in his pupil, just around it. Then go to blend modes and change these to either color or overlay, whatever you like. Don't do it too much, so drop the opacity and you get a different type of eye color if you want. So if you want to change this, press Ctrl U and move these sliders around. So maybe orange is better. So it still looks natural like that. Now, once you are done, just press OK. And that's pretty much it. And I think this looks pretty cool. And you can always just try to change stuff again if you want to. We have all these layers here that you can adjust and try to use your imagination and you will make something cool out of it.